Hello, everyone. Welcome back. First game of the day. Already on the plate, we've got uh, the uh, champion slate ready to go. It is Resolve versus Singularity. Now, this one split the analysts a little bit in the uh, predictions of which most people went for Singularity. It was, a, it was I think it was a 3-2 split towards Singularity. But Gulborg, you went for Resolve. I, is this a pure like jungle diffy? Are you saying soft jungle diffing this one? Like, where, where's, where's your thought process with the Resolve pick? Yeah, so basically it, it was also came from the point that obviously I missed a week. I just want to say I missed a week. So obviously SNG could have completely popped off last week and I might have missed it. But from what I saw from them in the beginning, I wasn't really convinced with their style of play and I wasn't really convinced with Resolve either. But Resolve seemed to be the team that had the fastest, what do you say, track record of improving over the course of week one. And I just felt like that might give them the edge here. And I, I also heard they got a little bit help on the coaching side without saying too much. So, you know, I put my fate in them. <laughs> oh, yeah, Gulborg's inside information from the Denmark crew is uh, is paying dividends. But there we go. It's uh, Gwen, Thresh, and Akali Ban. It is Ezreal, Karma, and we'll wait to see. Maybe a Renekta, maybe Lee Sin. These are things that we've seen pretty much, uh, a, a, you know, a lot of on that last ban on the, um, yeah, Renekta. Ooh. There you go for Singularity. Nocton's open. Varus is open. Alpha of Grabs. Open. Oh, my Jesus. But it's first oh. pick Lulu, by the way. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I have a theory on. for this, all right? I'm the type of person that really likes Enchanter's top lane. Top lane, full stop. I really like them because they're pretty good against any melee matchup in the top lane. They stay relatively safe and the tower. If a tower dive comes, it's really hard to dive underneath a tower. She creates a lot of time and space and paired with something extremely aggressive such as a Zinza, so you can literally follow him around, get in his pocket and sort of 1v9 the entire map. And you get to your two item power spike really easy as well. Now, seeing the Kog'Maw being locked in, I'm expecting to see maybe uh, a little Kog'Maw bot or if they feel and deem it necessary you can turn the lulu into something in the top lane if it's a, a matchup that she can be very safe in and you grab the brom for your kogma you keep him twice as safe yeah i just want to say troubles completely around um right with that assessment so really a strong flex pick we've seen both in lck but also a bit in the lec as well now on from the side of singularity they've picked up with the rumble and the poke and the virus and when you always go for that ap jungler you have the luxury of going to ad solo lanes instead so locking in the jace here for either fury or Wayso is going to be really good for you. It pairs up well with the kind of stylistic we're going for in this composition right here. You can clearly see there's already a poke stylistic coming through with the virus and with the Jace. Yeah, it feels like Singularity just looking to get onto those objective sites and just try and make it very Call difficult for Braum. <laughs> Braum would be pretty solid into heavy <laughs> It would. Comps. I completely agree. Um, but Singularity, you know, we talked a lot about like what these comps for them are designed to do. They've played something like this before. They just say, get onto the objective sites, make it difficult for Resolve to walk up to them just by spamming them with poke. And it seems that's where they're going with this particular comp. Um, something that we have seen a lot of is that you flex the Jace to top, or not even flex. Jace goes tops right, and then you just lock in Zoe afterwards later on for Fury and then suddenly you have the most disgusting poke comp, you know, but very difficult to approach that style of comp. Um, and you just maintain your distance versus the Kog'Maw, which might work out. Oh, we'll have to see where Singularity go with the Zoe, but uh, sorry, the LeBlanc ban, that's an interesting one for me. Maybe Zoe is being fought off the Singularity? I think I think you can definitely see it's a bit more target ban coming through here in terms of what they mm. might need from the side of Resolve. So what they're doing is like, all right, Chimera LeBlanc, we don't want to face it. If we have to flex either blind or mid laner into that, we don't want to let the Orn go through. We feel like that's going to help them in their team fight composition here. And then from the other side, you can see they're going for the Wukong and they're going for the engage in North now, there is still options up like the Leona. Uh, take away with Braum if you want to. It's still a good disengage you can have with the Varus. It pairs up nicely with a, a JSW as well, um, where he just oh, shoots bullets at you. But I, I think what you do here is just pick that support. You, you, you go for the support, you keep the flex open on your solo laner, and you get a favorable matchup. You put bot lane as a weak sider, and you play for the solo lanes instead. It's Prosper's Surely, Bard. Oh. It's Prosper's Bard. There we go. Okay. So what Team Singularity is trying to do here is wreak havoc on the map. Like super early, you poke with the Varus, you poke with the Jays, you make things happen on the map with the Bard. What I'm thinking about is a Bard is traditionally a pick that wants to roam around. You want to stick together with Nolte and sort of roam around the map, get, get your mid lane on advantage, get your top lane on advantage. The problem right here is that whoever they choose to put next to the Kog'Maw, it could end up even being a Leona at this point because you have the Lulu that you can put in a side lane. Um, you can very easily get onto that Varus if you pick something with heavy CC. It's going to be the little bot lane, okay? So Varus is undiveable, but an Octa did go through. Um, 
Yeah. The, like, the quadruple pick. AD threat. Okay. Yeah, but also I, 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 Kog'Maw's percentage max health magic yeah. damage. So you do have some... I mean, it's, yeah, it's yeah. hybrid. It's hybrid magic damage, right? It's hybrid magic damage. Um, that is a lot of dive, though. A good way to kind of counteract poke is just to pull the push the go button whenever you can. Like, if they start trying to throw poke out, you just you have a go button. Nocturnal is kind of a go button. I just am a little worried in the follow up. I don't know if there's a huge amount of like direct follow up for resolve. Like, if, especially if, if the distance is long. Like, if 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 Singularity are maintaining their distance, it might be a little more difficult for resolve to get into the fight. But those are our comps. Gragas top coming in for Vazor. A Vazor special, by the way. Um, Gulborg. These comps, what are you making of them? Yeah, I feel like Resolve, we need to see some early game productivity from the top side of the map. With the bot side, you don't really need to do much. They just need to be a late game insurance in the late game, of course. Um, since Al can be a stable frontliner with his ultimate, really. But my question is that, how do you deal with all this poke? Like, it needs to come down instantaneous. And you take a look onto Singularity, that's what they want. They want to poke you down before they start the team fight. Um, and this is where I like that the Nocturne has gone through, right? Because literally, Nocturne is big because of his one button. Ah, lights out, you can't see where you need to poke, you can't see who you need to defend, and your only, only, only weapon to being in the front line is your Gragas. And if Wazer chooses to go in the AP route and not tank, it's gonna be even harder for them to engage in the fight. But I guess we'll see how their early game goes. Yeah, I mean, there's two very interesting comps to kick things off here, guys. Uh, we have our beautiful duo of Hitbrain and Jamada ready, standing by to cast. We're gonna chuck it over to them. Thank you very much, Excoundrel. Hello and welcome to the Caster Desk. We're getting ready to go into our first game of the evening. This is Resolve versus Singularity. And um, I just realized, first of all, my camera needs to be adjusted, so I'm just going to slot that one out. Nice, there we nice, go. I'm back nice. on frame. Good start, um, good start. Yeah, bad start already. Uh, so <laughs> I'm liking both of these comps. Um, some strengths and weaknesses were pointed out. Obviously, Singularity have a really nice amount of poke, but if that poke doesn't land, if they can't make it hit, then you got the resolve kind of like engage from the nocturne onto dragdar or whoever he pleases if a chew is left unchecked and check later on into the game we know what cogmore can do especially when buffed up by lulu so it's gonna be quite an interesting game yeah i definitely agree a lot of non-camille engage tools on the smg side i think is the big uh, big thing for me like literally every champion bar jace effectively has a tool uh, to try and kick off a fight uh, and especially when you're talking about cogmore a lot of these tools are really, really potent, particularly Bards or the Tempered Fate. And you can just quite literally press it in his direction and it's a 50-50 chance that whether or not Archie has to blow his flash. So. Alrighty, well, defensive lines are being started up here. Um, we do actually see some wards go down and quickly swapped out for sweepers on the side of Singularity. Both Nolte and Dragdar do that. But other than that, I don't think we're going to see any of this kind of early game scrapping we did see earlier on in the season. But now it's probably just going to be jungle pathing as normal. Soft looks to be heading down towards his red side, while Nolte will be on his red side. So the junglers will be on the opposite side of the map from each other, at least for this early portion of the game. Yeah. And a lot of uh, cool mini storylines in this game too. Uh, yeah. Soft and Archu playing against Wazor, their former top. And Soft against Noe, a pretty tried and tested jungle matchup, to be honest, for as long as uh, Soft's been uh, in the UK and Nordic scene. Yeah. They've always managed to butt heads with one another. As, speaking of buying heads, mid laners punching each other. And uh, Dragdar, of course, as well, used to be on result. So there's loads of things going on. There's lots uh, of UK boys in this game. Yeah. Dragdar, Prosfair, Nor uh, Nolte, Soft, Primera. It's, it's, it's practically English as well, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's practically a, an English custom game, except there's yeah. actually stakes to it. We're getting there. Finally. We're, we're, we're getting Finally, there. we're getting there. Maybe we can uh, stop riding the Afari high for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully so. But uh, yeah, actually focusing on the game a little bit. I'm expecting to, to see Soft try and get a little bit aggressive in some of these lanes. It's normally what you want to see out of the, the Xin Zhao. I think you don't really want to see him uh, kind of be a bit of a farm bot. You want to try and uh, have Soft walk up towards side lanes and force uh, you know, ways or drag the Prosper off waves if possible. And if the setup is there and available, uh, definitely make ganks happen. But honestly, the setup in general is a little bit lackluster in the early early stages here for Resolve. So we could see Soft kind of just play out a, a pretty heavy farm game unless he tries to find Noi in the jungle, catch him out uh, in some skirmishes whenever he does find himself having lane priority. As, uh, we do look towards this bottom lane. Dragdar and Prosper do have the priority in it. They've got the shove. 
forcing it to actually. That's actually some pretty good oh, moves there. Um, He's got the flash available. He's chasing in for Prosper. Wow. Not quite enough to find the kill though, but Prosper has to burn the flash. He'll burn by uh, Dragar. Actually, Prosper didn't but flash. Prosper didn't, yeah. Very large amount of restraint to not flash out. Knows Dragar uh, also has the heal to keep him up. So doesn't panic too hard or doesn't panic at all really. Just kind of right clicks away. Very, very aggressive from Archie early on and does mean he's got to be a little careful now for the next five minutes. Especially if Dragdar uh, ticks over level six before that flash comes back up. Uh, can be very vulnerable. Is the thing about the Cogmore early does actually do a deceptively more yeah, damage yeah. than you expect because everyone thinks the Cogmore is kind of like a late game champion. You know, this yeah. champion that scales up and hits this kind of three <laughs> item spike and then just takes over the game. But, you know, kind of brief first Ooh. items coming through. His trading pattern's not awful, especially when you got the Lulu to buff him up to kind of add extra damage. Now, we're looking away from the bot lane and we are seeing Chimera jumping into Fury. Prosper has roamed over those. They get slowed down by the Harpoon. Cosmic Binding's not going to hit Chimera either. That is just going to be resolved having a flash out of that little play. Yeah. The invade definitely seemed a little bit pre-planned there, but because SNG got priority in the bottom side, Prosper opened up back into the mid lane. Uh, and he was there to actually support his mid and jungler. Secure that camp. Wazel's been really annoying to Caleb. I think Caleb's been trying to crash this wave for about two waves now. Uh, finally able to get a reset off. But yeah, really nice stuff from Prosper. Effectively, his presence forces Chimera's flash. Uh, so now he's got to play a little more respectfully, potentially. But Lee Sin's got so much mobility. Typically, he's pretty safe even without flash. Yeah. As we're approaching that five minute mark, Singularity are slowly, just through these CS leads, especially towards this bot side, are slowly pulling ahead of gold. Not anything major, nothing overly significant right now, but the two will catch most of this wave crashing into him and probably equalize out on that CS deficit somewhat here. Pings are going down on the minimap towards the dragon. It looks like Soph is going to look to try and start this one up. As uh, Nolte's actually off in the top side, so he might just be looking for a little something up there. Though Caleb is pretty heavily shoved in, so that's be a pretty pretty ballsy setup to actually try and make that play work. Yeah, I think Wazel probably approaching ticking over to level six and next wave or so, but no, he's just not willing to wait that long to make a force play happen. So just a little bit of covering. Uh, effectively what it ends up being. Um, Soft, like you say, potentially eyeing up a dragon start, but didn't have bottom lane priority, just now lost mid lane. And uh, potentially just didn't know where Noi was, so considered it a pretty risky start. But now it's actually Noi puffing up towards the dragon. And with all of this bottom side priority, you expect to start and probably a takedown with Sof on the top side. It's probably not going to be a contest. Yeah, Dragon going to get started up by Singularity. No real contest available to the side of Resolve. They're just going to give this one up. It's only that first power Dragon as well, so it's not too significant. And uh, if anyone's watching UKLC, I have to be good news for you. We're not having a cloud soul today. We had four back to back in the UKLC yesterday. Yeah. So let's get a bit of a change. Yeah, I will say this is a pretty high value cloud dragon. When you think about how SNG are likely going to play out the game with all of their ultimates. Yep. Uh, trying to cast them off cooldown. There's a lot of things going on here in the mid lane. Loads of members congregating. Uh, Chimeric goes a little bit low, but it looks like they're trying to close in somewhat here. Prosper takes a magical journey, and Chimera's on the other side. He's got the kick, he loads for the bot back and tries to follow up as that's the flash out by oh. Resolve. They've already lost Chimera. Soft will be next up on the menu as he <laughs> takes a journey to no. his demise. The shot blast by Fury will secure himself a double kill. Yeah, and again, Prosper's just here in the mid lane. First of the move, they've always had priority. Uh, Help Noi take down the dragon and just roamed up towards the mid lane with him. Simple as that. Fast like Nachu, a very static lane on this Kog'Maw and Lulu. So exactly what you want to see out of the Bard. Proactivity in the early game, supporting the jungler in these ganks. And the replay, it kind of really speaks for itself. Chimera almost escapes just with the safeguard out towards soft, but the tunnel is really nice to sort of close the gap. It closes off one of the exits available to Chimera. And once that Cosmic Binding comes in to stun him up, there's no way out really. And soft kind of just the victim of trying to help out his mid laner. Prosper's roaming has been, the uh, Dragdar has been kind of isolated in the lane, so finally a Chua has actually pulled ahead in CS, although another it's big wave's crashing in, so that should pretty much be negated by the end of this, if not actually 
Switched He's in favor of Dragdar, providing he doesn't mess up his farming here. Yep. Well, there you go. Prosper having a much better performance than we've seen out of him over the last uh, few weeks. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, for Prosper, it, it's, it's been a needed return to form. Remember, he played yeah. on the Fnatic at Rising roster back when that, that team was first uh, built and first made. He had a really, really good run with them. He was part of that, the kind of glory days of Fnatic Rising when they were winning back-to-back -back titles, having okay runs within the European Masters. But now it's, you know, he's he's been away from them for a little bit and he's looking to kind of return to himself as kind of one of the top supports in the region. And a good split of sing uh, good yeah, sorry, singularity. A good split of singularity would be necessary for him to be able to do that. So keep our eye on him over the season and this game in particular, because his rotating is is roaming has been pretty impactful for the team. Is uh yep, Camara did miss that game. He did, yeah. I know, don't what worry. The noise was for. I, Sad sometimes boy I get out. really upset about it. But uh Hero drops in the top side. Uh, Bard, it doesn't have level six available. Brosset doesn't have level six, so he can't block off the Herald. That's uh, so a really good timing here uh, by Resolve to just drop this one down. They probably know as soon as Prosper hits level six, life just gets a lot tougher to make a Herald play work. And now Noise actually in the area. Thinking about it, but seeing Soft actually exit uh, the top side doesn't really want to risk uh, the play. Fury's starting but to do yeah. a fair amount of damage here. 2 0, remember. Got that serrated. Got the um, Vampiric as well. So building towards that Eclipse. And Gamera kind of working towards the Gore Drinker. Has obviously got the uh, the whip, but not quite there yet for the moment. No, not quite. And Fury kind of got free late, uh, rain in this lane to do whatever he wants at the moment. And doesn't really feel friend at all by Camara uh, or even Soft showing up in the lane, just with the Prince oh, of well. Noi. That's, yeah. Just a quick Trader. DPS check by a Chew. Nope, we're not quite there yet. Couple of wars. He wants to know. Is he half helping people with two or is he <laughs> you know, just taking little nibbles out? That's his nibbles right now. As given the butt the, the brush hide that, I think they want to see if they'll overextend on this wave. They've got their jungler coming in. There's the honey to slow them down, but a magical journey will stop any potential here from a Chew. And just one of the small annoying things about playing against Bard sometimes. Magical journeys can be kind of oppressive if you're looking for plays like that, but... Uh, well played by Prosper and Dragdar, and on Prosper, of course, like you say. Uh, I believe SNG is one of the rosters that could be one of those that end up, you know, contesting the, the uh, academies, uh, quite rightfully so, with the correct kind of direction. Okay. A lot of whips coming through. Yeah, a lot of whips, actually. Crack that whip. Licorice whip. Do you ever watch that? No. <laughs> Simpsons, bro. No. I'll have to Where's show it? you in the break. Yeah, you, you have to. I'm it's a zoomer still, you have to remember. Oh. <laughs> okay. Like, Resolve wanted to make something happen on, onto Fury, but again, Prosper already hit to the play. Feels He's like he ready. is on the present. Quite it looks literally. like a Chew is sticking around in top lane. They're not actually fussed about Dragon. They really want to secure plates in first turret blood for a Chew here. Although, Wazel's doing a pretty good job of absorbing some of this pressure, and being on a Gragas naturally has okay wave clear, so these waves do get cut through fairly quickly. Dragon is now up on the Rift, and again, Resolve not even interested in contesting it. So it looks like it I should just be a freebie for Singularity, their second Dragon. I think it's the right call, though. I think when you're against the composition like SMGs, uh, it's just not the right time at the moment, though. These dragons are rolling in quite quickly once uh, Noi does decide to fly up as oh, well, hello. Got the, oh, uh, that's a lot of damage, it's you. Wow. Wazor. The help of the tower there. Kind of just won't be doing. Yeah, very angry of his XAD carry. Why did you leave me? <laughs> <laughs> Wazor. You said you were going for cigarettes. <laughs> never came back. But, uh, Dragon yeah. has been secured and we're looking at an ocean soul this game. No one's really going to turn their nose up at that one. No. Uh, certainly not, especially when you're playing a poke comp. Uh, any poke that can be returned, primarily realistically through the Cogmore, uh, just going to be healed up. I think over the last couple of months, people have started to kind of consider Ocean Soul one of the, the weaker ones. Just, I think, due to the way the mare is at the moment, it's very burst heavy. Uh, and Ocean Soul doesn't really get to take much effect in a mare like this. Although, interestingly, because there is a lot, there's also poke comps that are quite 
pre yeah. uh, relevant in that's not the word that are good right now because uh -huh. apparently I can't speak English. Um, sure. You know, singularity displaying one right here. They've got a virus and they've got a Jace. So Ocean Soul, the sustain you get from that surely can't be all that bad. Well, the I mean, singularity are the team looking to pick it up. So yeah, yeah, it's it's more the case of like in in a game like this. Likely, oh, I think there's a magical oh. joke. Yeah, Kalem. Kalem, he's getting locked down. Oh. He's going to equalize his escape. And Dragdar will find his first kill of the game. That's three kills now. Over to the side of Singularity. Chu just kind of cross-mapping everywhere. The cask just clears out the wave a little bit. And Chu picking himself up a couple of places. Chimera and Fury not going to go for a little exchange of health bars here. Yeah, no, a lot of gold actually is being put onto Archie. I'd be curious to see uh, the gold, actually, just to see how much... Uh, He's got in his pocket. 500 up on Dragdar, uh, especially when you consider Dragdar's got a kill uh, to his name. It's actually a pretty sizable lead as Wazor, I think, is about to be bullied by a resolve members. See how he handles oh, it. Q's doing so much damage. Oh. Soft's the one to secure the kill. Tempered Fate was using the teleports finished up by Fury, but he's not gonna be able to get too much more there. Unfortunately for Resolve, it was Soft that got that kill. Uh, Soft, uh, Chu's actually finished up the Phantom Dancer as his first item, interestingly enough. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty interesting ionization choice. Uh, we'll have to speak about you later today. Ask him his thoughts on that. Because typically we do see, uh, you know, things like the Wits End, things like even Shield Bow Rush is considered yeah. pretty good uh, in the right kind of scenarios. So PD, not, certainly not the traditional build. We see at the moment. Got the uh, double gore drinker stride breaker on the side of Resolve to the Eclipse and the Prowler's Claw. Although the resets are coming in somewhat soon, so I'm interested to see when we do see these first items get picked up as uh, Prosper spots out Soft and Soft shows him how wind can become lightning. And misses the skill shot. That's exactly it. So uh, let's see. Herald wants to be styled up here by Resolve, and it's going to be, but you have to imagine SMG might contest it given the strength in river fight you can certainly see by posturing they were thinking about it ever so slightly but i think just the amount of control that resolve have in the river at the moment is enough to dissuade uh, any kind of attempt so free hero pick up for resolve their second of the game let's see what kind of effectiveness they can get out of it it's, it's always hard though because like you hit on in the first, last one the tempered fate was uh, wasn't available to prosper now it's up. now it is. so you have to play away from him and the lane he's going towards is bot side right now and i don't know if you want to waste herald on that top lane it only had two plates when plates it, were still a thing yeah. so there's not that much health left on the tower as you can see it would kind of be a bit of a waste here interesting to see them not try and commit for the tower but they are hey. just gonna step away now cancel Ooh. those recalls i actually think they could have got that tower i think they could have but now they're they're gonna try and bait weasel into the uh oh. he's gonna see him but the honey's gonna slow him down as a chew just lays out the spit carpet. Yeah, I mean, honestly, nice exempt from Wazor to just put the barrel in the bush to get a little bit of vision. But uh, he will have to yield this tower now. Doesn't quite have enough information. You can see all the vision in the river from Resolve. Uh, it's just too much fog yeah. for Wazor, so it's just not worth uh, sitting here and trying to defend the tower, which is realistically uh, pretty much a dud anyway. And on the bottom side, Fury is actually pretty close to responding uh, to that tower, so... Shouldn't be too long. That's Dragon's 30 seconds out, and it's resolved that have more trading tools in terms of having the Herald in their back pocket. Let's see what they want to do with it, because right now, I mean, they're pathing towards the top side, which yeah, indicates for me... <laughs> Prosper knows that play is going on. As soon as Herald yeah. summoned, the fate will be sealed, and they're not going to be able to get anything with that. It's, it's the really irritating thing about playing into Bard. Yeah. And, and they might just end up giving up this third Dragon. Uh, potentially a reset's only coming in now. Seems like that will be the case, which I feel like over the last few weeks, Resolve are actually a team that, despite the results, have had pretty good objective control uh, around the Dragons in particular. Obviously, this game there put their focus more towards the Heralds, but it's never nice to be put at soul point so early on in the game, and it does it does make teams and players panic a little bit. A lot of mistakes end up being forced just because of the threat of giving up so many stats. So let's see how they handle it. Herald's still in pocket, so I mean, Resolve. They've got a little bit of time left, about a minute and a half, maybe. As all uh -oh. soft, face checking. 
Soft's getting cooked up a little bit as he goes for the Crescent Slash, being burned out by the Equalizer, but now will be okay. That was close. It was very close. <laughs> But it, it, this is the thing: is when you got Herald, it's it's obviously it's, it's obvious when you're gonna go and place it down. It's it's not like it's yeah. really that sneaky. They set up the lanes, they go in for the shove, and Prospect can just read that and move around the map, and then Herald is basically wasted. Yeah, pretty much. And I mean, it's credit to Prospect and his, his positioning, his reading of the map right now is oh no, DPS check from Archie again. It's not quite there yet. Another couple levels. <laughs> He's getting there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, credit to Prosper. He's just been around where he expects the Herald to be dropped almost uh, every single time. Uh, holding on to the mid lane now. They're trying to kill him. You can see yeah. that they're desperately they're... trying to kill him because that gives them the option opportunity to do it. Soft's about to time out on this Herald, so I, I like to see maybe he's just gonna, go He's got to pick somewhere. Uh, it, it's going to get wasted. Got about 20 seconds or so left. So he's just going to drop it in the mid lane. Looks like he wants to drop it in the bottom. Nope. He's thinking about it. Clear discussion going on. <laughs> Uh, running out of time. Yeah, he is running well, out of time. Prosper is resetting. All right, now's the moment. He's placed I mean, it. No, Bart's Prosper's going to be back in time. I don't gonna think they're going to be able to stop this from happening. Yeah, I mean, Wave if they dropped it right Prosper's... in front of the tower. Oh, it's just. Oh. He's, I don't know. I don't think oh. he's in range. <gasps> no, he's got he's it. in range. Oh, yep. the horror story. I hate Bard, man. But it looks like Chimera not going to go for this. And this tower will fall, probably. If not this oh. wave, but in the next couple. I mean, it is realistically, you know, one good wave or two more sort of small non-cannon waves from uh, being able to be put down. So you can sort of call it a win for, for SNG. Obviously, it's, you know, Resolve, you'd ideally like that Herald to go down uh, as taking down the tower, but you're just going to have to be a bit more patient. Archie needs more time as well. The, oh my goodness me. Oh, oh shoot! He said, "No, he's not." Uh, yeah. Again, loads of loads of poke, a lot of non-committal tools, just kind of there for SNG. They, I mean, Archer didn't actually have a response. He was out of range of all of those skill shots. I'm not quite sure what he could have done. Uh, flash burn. He has to go back to base. And that's pretty big when you're talking about a Soul Dragon being up in two minutes' time, because now all Prosper has to really do is line up a real nice Tempered Fate, and all of a sudden you've just got a really good team fight almost immediately. And Resolve have to be in full retreat mode and full peel mode to try and save their AD carry from that engage. <laughs> Wait, Sof, you saw the wards. They're not invisible ones. I don't think he was in the bush. I think oh. he was just outside. So. Didn't quite see. And he's going to get interrupted again. <laughs> Thumbs up, <laughs> he knows. You know what? It's off. I feel your pain. Sometimes yep. you just want to buy an item. Gale Force has been finished up for a two, so she wants some mobility. Yep. I here. don't blame him. As, as, uh, oh, being used. Um, a teleport what? coming in. Oh, <laughs> hello. Wait, a two? <laughs> All right, well. What happened? Wait, um, we need that in slow mo. What just happened? Caleb disappeared. Yeah. Fury decided to I turn into a magician. Of so many like just like pings or something coming up. You know that chat yeah. down that let's let's get this in slow-mo because Caitlyn was full nice HP when he dashed in. And we saw it on the bottom for it. He just dies. <laughs> what? He, he just dies in, in the space of a second and a half. Oh, I'm sad we didn't quite get that on the camera. Yeah, I mean, it's just Jace is on spike, so you kind of understand where the damage comes from, but He's a ghost. He just slipped into the ethereal plane. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then going to be having dreams about that one. Nightmares. Yeah. Fleetingly for someone who is the nightmare champion. Yeah. Waking up in cold sweats. But I mean, I just don't know if Resolve are really ready to, to contest this, this Ocean Soul. So I, think, I mean, they might fight for it. But I mean, realistically, I think if they fight for it, they're just going to lose. I feel like if they just give this up, though, I feel like that would just be a signal it, it, for... It's a he can just roll over constantly all game long yeah. and stuff. He's not willing to roll over. He wants to try and contest, but there's no ability so for him to get over that wall other than a flash. He doesn't have the vision, so Soul is secured by the side of Singularity. And it just feels like Resolver kind of watching the game go by. 
Yeah. It's I made the joke yesterday. Gameplay. Yeah, I made the joke yesterday about there being 25 spectator spots in TR. <laughs> no. It's looking like one of those games. Uh, again, I mean, yesterday we saw a Kog'Maw uh, in the UKLC. And I mean, in, in that game, he was the old oh, Archu, Gale Force. That's why we take Gale Force. Yeah. Uh, does Band Aid not having Flash Prosper? A little bit of an uh, overstep, but Magical Journey. Soft. Soft feeling it gets caught out by the chains, but here comes the fight. They're looking to flash in. The Stride Breaker is on. A two free firing up on the sidelines for the moment. And Prosper will be the first victim of the fight. But the side of Resolve, they're all Wazel. Wazel's coming in. That's a huge cast. Throws out the Glacial Shroud for the moment. And Nell is just all on a two. Can he keep the DPS going? I don't think he can. His support is low. And Gamera is running away. Resolve. Trade in the fight, two for two. And they find the engage. Archie, oh, right on top of Fury. Fury just done uh, Fury, turn you around. <laughs> there you go. I not sure if that was the one, at you? Fury. Oh, here comes the arrow. What's that arrow? Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Fury quite clearly had eyes for Archie and uh, I mean for uh, for Chimera, and whereas Archie had eyes for Fury. And then once Fury realized he was losing HP, he uh, swatted the bug. And yeah, that's I mean, that's a sad B. That's a sad B. Yeah. Has replay. Starts off with prospect, kind of overstepping his reach a little bit, but obviously has all the tools available to him to escape. Kalem, I think, a little bit too far deep onto Dragda, but he pushes him out of the fight, which is relatively important. Prospect in the middle of it all goes down, and Archu is free hitting for a majority of this fight, but you can see Wazor just barely misses out on a multi man body slam. Yeah. And if he does land that, honestly, the fight is just a complete rout for Resolve. and. I mean, you can see Fury just clearly has eyes for Chimera until he recognizes he's about to die. It, it, the interesting thing about this game is there's only a 3,000, 2,000 gold lead between these two teams. So it's actually not as one-sided as it might appear, appear. Now, obviously, there are some kind of like hidden gold values you get in having that Ocean Soul and just those dragons as well. But it's not completely doomed for the side of Resolve. Oh. If a cheeky eating shot blast like that, no. it might be problematic. Do we he count that? As a, as a cast the curse, it's not doomed for, for us all. All of a sudden, they're in the carry just lose half their HP over the wall. Uh, but the, but yeah. the, that mid lane tower is low, the bot lane tower is low. I mean, all of these okay. towers that are available to be taken are actually, you know, a sneeze away from going down. Oh boy. As Soft gets himself caught out in the Tempered Fate and the Equalizer there, I think Soft may just be sealing the deal. Far uh, like he's a shot blast and Achu's going to try and save his jungler. They are able to survive the onslaught here, but Fastleg needs to go for a reset, and Wazor has to be a little bit careful here. It looks like Singularity is just going to turn their attention towards the Baron Nasher. No vision really, as Prosphere will clear out the one ward they have. And there's uh, nowhere for them to teleport to, so uh, yeah. this, this is gone. Yeah, I think it's a freebie. I don't think a result can contest, much like all of the other drag. Oh no. Go on, Chimera. Go on, no. Chimera. Land a kick. He's going. No, no, he's not. No. Here's the teleport resolve. Looking for the on two. Right. Fight. Here's the paranoia into the middle of three from Caleb. Instantly gets taken out. A two. Three firing up, but he gets himself stunned. Has to right. cleanse as he dodges away on the cast. Chimera in the middle of everyone. Goes for the kick. Gets a taxi out from Fury. And Fury just pops him back into the middle of Singularity. Two members of Resolve fall. Baron secured for Singularity. And they don't lose a life. Yeah, I mean, Resolve. Kind of just look out of gas. I, I mean, it looked out of gas from the start of the game almost. Uh, SNG just have a bit of a superior comp uh, at dealing with these kind of situations around objectives. And Resolve have never quite been able to find a, a pocket of time to actually uh, find small advantages in skirmishes. And Soft just goes a little bit too deep. It's just very uh, disheveled. Oh, I'm trying to find the correct word. I don't think that is English, but hey. Uh, Disheveled is not a word. I'm disheveled. I'm, I, there's, a, there's a word similar to that. Anyway, the point is, Resolve right now just can't quite play uh, with one another in team fights. It seems, uh, and well, even the if they, they could, have. I mean, they've tried, but SNG just kind of ruined them. With I mean, all of when these, you, these tools they've when, got. When either Fastlane or Chu are getting poked out before the fights. Yeah, it's exactly. just so rough for them. Oh, speaking of the shot blast yeah. onto a chew for a shield that's no, and guard. That's no serpent. Oh, that is a serpent. Oh, oh yeah. Oh! All right. Yeah. So I think moral of the story is maybe don't give SNG Varus and Jace at the same time. This could 
could be a, a pretty strong case study for it. Yeah, I, I, I think I'd agree with that one. As uh, The stun works on the base gates, by the way. Uh, yeah, it does. Really very on. annoying. Uh, as Oh, there's a deep teleport from Chimera. It's very deep, but the magical journey oh, just puts them on the other side of the map. As they're just going to look to take up this dragon. Resolve looking for the opportunity. But the arrows are coming in and shot blast as well. The two's my. hot health and Nolte is just going to lay down the equalizer. Soft is low HP and they can only do a little bit of poking as Kalim is going to prop the paranoia, trying to scare them off. Here comes Chimera. Here comes the kick. Here comes the engage. But a Chew trying to kite on the sides, unable to do so. The Tempted Fate comes down. That's one kill. This is the second one here for Singularity. They take out two like it's nothing and they crack open the next part of the base. They've got the Baron, they've got the wave, and it looks like they might just have the game here. Singularity are just walking over Resolve in this first game of the third week of the NLC. The shot blasts are being dodged, but Achu just not on the power spike, unable to deal with it as Fury bops into him and almost takes him down. Prosper flashes forward, the chains go <laughs> wide, but it doesn't matter. They're just farming stats, they're farming damage dealt here. As Kalen will kill. lose his life, the Equalizer will cook Resolve on their own base. This is just tragic to watch. Here's oh, the shot no. blast, here's the arrow. They're going for the dive, they're going for the finish up, and they're going for the end. 29 minutes on the clock. Singularity absolutely destroy Resolve. Completely mint through Resolve this time around. And honestly, a strong effort from everybody on SNG. This was kind of just start to finish. There was no answer. From yeah. resolve and i think you can you can kind of link it back to draft that you, you say you know they've got strong solo laners yes that they can play towards but xin Zhao needs more setup than that to be able to attack these lanes and even though they did try and funnel a lot of resources into archu it just wasn't enough and yeah. prosper on the bard he was always there at any play that resolve tried to make and just the poke eventually when the, once these iron spikes started to roll in there was just no answer from resolve they just didn't have enough hard engage well, that's the end of our first game, but we've got more to come, so we're going to break it down with our analyst desk after this. But for now, break time.